over me! Hi. Hi. My... Oh. God damn it. My name's Nick and his name's Marty. We're from the Rational Gamers. I'm the Marty one. We're doing shit today. I still have my head boggling because I just had a go on a vibe. <laughs> That's so fucking good. Anyway, this week we're talking about uh, a desktop game of theatre support for Steam. We are talking about uh, the closure of Lionhead Studios, which we know was news last week, but we went here last week, and the cancellation of Fable. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. We're talking about Halo tournaments and how they're kind of not happening. Titanfall coming to Origin Access next week. And we're also talking about Sony responding to Microsoft's invite to let Xbox players come to PS4 players and letting them play together. Sony's uh, VR shit and also a different kind of VR which is pushing the envelope of what we already know. Hmm. Mysterious, no? Yep, pretty pretty mysterious. Hold up. Hold on. Da 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 da! Leave me alone. Very good. So, um, yeah, so for those of you that uh, weren't listening 10 seconds ago, um, we just had a Steam VR experience, the HTC Vive. Indeed, it was awesome. Yeah, so. I felt um, like a complete badass. I was shooting things in the air. It was so good. So responsive. I watched him do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, 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 you can book. <laughs> They're, they're, they're only having these demonstrations in five places in the entire fucking country. Yeah. And I don't live anywhere near where, so... And I'm only up here for today, so... Uh, you, you can book and go and have a go anytime. Exactly, that's what I thought. It made most sense for you to, uh, to have a go as soon as you were here. And it was so cool. So you can imagine, I, I went onto this random website and... As you do. And, and look through and it said, oh, it's only in five places in the UK. I thought I'd check, you know, one might be in Birmingham and we could possibly go. <laughs> and it, it's, it's like Stoke-on-Trent. What the hell are you talking about? One's in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, yeah, one was in Stoke-on-Trent. So, uh, yeah, we went to it. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It was 17 minutes, I think. Who's right there? there. Yeah. <laughs> um, just um, amazing, absolutely amazing. So um, we went to Overclockers UK, um, which is in Newcastle. Um, so thank you very Sorry much to Overclockers. They uh, they did us a solid there. They're fantastic and uh, really nice guys as well. We went up. We hadn't booked, um, even though it distinctly stated on the website yeah. that we had to. <laughs> and um, and they were really nice about it. Found us a uh, slot straight away, and um, we were still able to go and see it, even though we hadn't. So brilliant hats off to them. It's not the first time I've used them. I really like them, and they did. Yeah, did really well. And, and yes, and of course, we got to play. Um, so, yeah, I mean, do you want to kind of describe what it is that you did while you were there? Yeah, uh, we get, uh, I guess we're going to have the footage of me playing about somewhere. Uh, yeah, first of all, um, comfy as... What? No, oh, yeah, I was talking. <laughs> comfy as balls. It was actually uh, really good. I've played on the... Um, uh, I played on the uh, Oculus Rift for about five minutes before now, and that was good. That was a good, good experience, but I had to use the controller to actually move around. So my first experience of using it actually in 3D space, yeah. and I got to play this game. It was kind of like a sort of Space Invaders, basically these little robot guys come down from the sky, and you had the Vive controllers with the triggers. And you basically just shot at them, and it was really cool. It was really immersive. You had like a smoking spaceship behind you, but you'd never actually have to turn around. You only had like one frame of um, thing. I imagine if it gets harder and you get on in it, then they'll be all around you. Type. But um, yeah, I was, I was I was shooting these things like I was feeling like bad. I was like, oh yeah, it's like. Mm. Then it then they started shooting back at me. And I, I died a few times. And then I realised, wait, this I can actually move around in this space. So I started shooting, and they started shooting at me, and I, I moved. And I saw the lasers. And it was so badass. It even had a little slowdown, like, ooh, kind of like bullet time. And it just made you feel so amazing. It was so cool. And the controllers are actually really, really nice. They've got kind of like... um. The touchpad the Steam controller has, 
and you can actually change weapon modes on them like you had the burst shot and you had the continuous shot which I was like ah spitting lead and you had like the lasers which had a little charge up and uh, I don't know what was this game called I can't actually remember I don't know those space pirates that you were fighting yeah. weren't they I don't know uh, but yeah you could use the little uh, touch pads to change and it was just so intuitive uh, you moved around and you could see them in the virtual space and the only thing I will uh, say was a little bit jarring was the fact you can't see your legs. But I imagine, I'm sorry. <laughs> I imagine this will come with time. Uh, because being that immersive and not being able to see your legs when you're moving around, it does actually disorient you a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't realise how much you rely on seeing your legs as to where you're moving. Mm -hmm. That's what I was worried about walking into the guy demonstrating for us. <laughs> and getting kicked out, but... If you get too close to a wall, it does actually come up with like a grid uh, saying like there's a wall here. So you can actually see the wall in a way in your virtual reality. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, played this other game which was a painting game. Google Tilt Brush. Google Tilt Brush. That was surprising fun. <laughs> You can paint in 3D. I mean, I was painting like, <laughs> move around. <laughs> I was drawing, like, I started off by just drawing a cube, and then I turned it into a tesseract by just reaching inside the cube I just drawn and draw another cube. And that was cool. And you can change, like, the backward drops and everything at one point. I, you can change it to sky. I changed it to space, and it looked amazing. And the guy said, Okay, now look at your controller, which is, um, it, like, you turned it around and it had, like, uh, screens with different brushes and environments on. And he said you can change the landscape, you can change the ground, change that to space. So I did, and the ground just disappeared, and I, I felt like it was floating in space. And it was like, oh my god! Yeah, it's, it's a really cool setup in that you've got one hand, which is your paintbrush, effectively. Yeah. So you're able to do everything that you need to do with that, but then your other one... Is, is just effectively your menu screens, but you're able to turn it round to go to different options and then use the paintbrush to then choose. So it's, it's really intuitive how you kind of, uh, how you create things using it. And, and this is the, one of the titles that's going to be packaged in. So when you purchase a Vive, you know you're going to get this, this experience. And then I turned around and the moon was there. Mm. A 3D moon right there. I felt like I could reach out and touch it. So I drew a happy smiley face on it. <laughs> And then, and then I, I, I changed to a snowy environment with a snowman whose head was still in the same place as the moon, so I had the smiley face on. And I realised it was actually snowing, and the snow was actually coming down around me. And that was really, really cool. And again, all of the snow is, uh, all of them are 3D objects. Yeah, So yeah. you can move around the snow. I mean, it's, it's it wasn't just a sprite, it was so. like snow was around me. I turned and it would move with me as, and as you would expect snow too. Like I could look around the entire snowflake. It was, mm. it's, if, if you have a chance to go and check out the vibe in one of these uh, places, or you're remotely close to one of these places, go and try it out. You can do it in overclockers. Certain overclockers and it's, it's uh, literally P just this, 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 this one over. Oh, is it? And the rest of them, the rest of them uh, PC can, world. Yeah, Curry's PC world. But go on, uh, just search for Vive demonstration. I should be able to find it. But yeah, five locations in the UK. Mm. <laughs> we got to go to one of them. Yeah, just so happened that <laughs> so there was happy. a free space like half an hour yeah. after we turned up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Until then, we 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 just sat in there. Was it their master chair or something and tried to break their system? So, yeah, it was quite good fun actually. <laughs> and then a kid took it off. <laughs> yeah, and I had better control of it than you did. Um, what? So there's a um, an interesting thing though is that um, Steam are kind of getting ready for this. They they're fully aware that this is a it's big thing. They want awesome. to be at the the cutting edge. So what they've added, um, literally today, as I uh, no yesterday, um, as I'm looking at this, March the 18th is desktop game theater support so you're now able to run any of your normal games in a theater mode in a giant virtual screen on the headset so instead of looking at your crappy little screen that you might have in front of you if you put on the headset you'll be able to see it on a giant massive theater screen in front of you and potentially the great thing is that you're able to then have other people sit in and watch it with you so it's it's very much then becomes a, a, a uh, couch type mm. situation 
Um, and you can imagine if they were to then, if you were able to put some form of avatar in there as well, yeah. and you could get something. You could turn around and like, oh look, it's Marty. Yeah, but you we're not actually sat together or anything. Yeah, you could get something genuinely sociable. You could turn around and you might see Darren, who's currently in Hong Kong, yeah, sitting around. Yeah. Basically, we can go back to the um, couch co-op of olden days, mm. but remotely. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we've been, we've mastered kind of uh, multiplayer over the internet, but you don't actually get the feeling of just sitting with somebody. And VR, especially the experience I had today, it's feeling that kind of immersive that you will get that if you have like an avatar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still got a long way to go for it to be like uh, like photorealistic or anything, but it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. Mm -hmm. And I just think that this is this basic concept is something that adds value to your current <coughs> library oh god yeah um, and adds value to the headset um, so it's it's a really great move and something that you can't imagine took a massive amount of effort on their part um, but it's just a, a, a really simple little uh, little addition but already there are VR ready games I mean I know I have a few of them on my steam list mm -hmm. one of them being um, Elite Dangerous <laughs> that would be fucking amazing yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine actually. I guess you would use the things, and you would hold like one, like um, or like that, and like that. <laughs> <coughs> then to look at the different screens, all you do is turn your head. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. It worked really well. Uh, another one I think is. Uh, oh god, I can't remember what it is. It's the one with the uh, picture where somebody's falling. <laughs> I don't Turbo dismount? No. Mm, so much falling on that. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this this is this is just so you can play your kind of really regular desktop games. I mean, this yeah. is this is so you can play Nidhogg on a giant theatre screen. So you could just. Yep, I th it just seems like such a good idea. Well, yeah, you've got a basically they're doing it so that you've got a general screen a monitor built in, mm. which. Uh, you know, judging by how much monitors are these days, uh, a good monitor. Mm. And you know, this, this really, is... really, ju ju just goes towards just to find the price, which is quite fucking steep. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, and it's um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what else they might add to mm -hmm. uh, to Steam in the future. So they kind of increase. They can this. definitely go places from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now to go for something that's um, a little bit older in terms of news. Yeah, we weren't here last week. No. Well, I mean, to be fair, Nick was. I wasn't. <laughs> Let me know at the shortest notice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th I, I, was, I was sure I was going to be better. It turned out that... I mean, it was Thursday that I was I was kind of ill. Um, and I was just... I th kept on putting it off, just thinking, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Friday, I'll be fine. Saturday, I'll be fine. Sunday, I'll be fine. It turned out that I wasn't fine until the next Thursday. Um, uh, now I'm okay now. Yeah, and I couldn't get anybody in. I was feeling a bit crappy anyway, so uh, let's get some highlights. Hope you enjoyed the highlights. Yeah, it seemed pretty good. Uh, so. Um, get uh, back in frame. Right? Lionhead Studios are dead. Yeah, shit about that. I liked Black and White too. I liked Fable. And Fable 2. I've not actually played Fable. Don't dick around with a camera. Whoa, we're on feed! Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Really improved things. You could just move yourself. No! I refuse to Never! move. Never! I refuse to move. Lionhead Studios is dead. Peter Muller News Original Studio is closed, which is kind of weird because the new Fable game was almost finished. And that's kind of been screwed. Yeah, I so can see somebody taking that on and just finishing it off, though. Hopefully. I don't know. I doubt it. I'm guessing that's half the reason why it's dead. Uh, Man, it's nearly finished, though. It's practically, you know, playable. I mean, I mean it, it, it absolutely you said Newbie Carl bloody well played that beta. Yeah, yeah. Um, and apparently it was alright. Yeah. He, he was quite happy with it. Um, I played all of ten seconds worth because he was hogging the controller and wouldn't let me play it. <laughs> Douche Carl. Carl! <laughs> douche Carl! Is that his new uh, name? Not Newbie Carl. Douche Carl! You've be, you've be, you've be degraded to Douche Carl. Um, yeah, so uh, it, my guess <laughs> is that they've run into some uh, some major issues with it. Like money. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, with the game itself more than anything else. Like I mean, shit, just like that. Uh, Connect Fable. Uh, I played the demo of that. I was kind of happy with that. Demos are different to full games. I appreciate they're different to full games, but it was a decent proof of concept for the game. And so was this. So was the demo for this. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the thing that upsets me is that Fable was a fantastic game and a great concept, and they kept on trying to change it. Um, they did yeah, it with Fable like 3. Fable. People didn't like Fable 3. I know, and rightly so. And then they, they did it again with Fable Connect, which name I can't remember, Fable Journey, um, yeah, which, which they really didn't need to do. And then they did it again with Fable Legends. Um, they, they changed it up in a way that really wasn't necessary by trying to create it this multiplayer concept and, and with the kind of third, uh, fourth person creating something else. And mm. it, 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 it's not what Fable is. Fable is a stupid game where you can fart on chicken. <laughs> and that's fine. Well, if it's more than anything, it's, uh, it's doing things differently. But I mean, Peter Molyneux had nothing to do with this. Yeah, I appreciate that. But he started the um, for a while. He started the idea of being different. Now you only have to look at what he's putting out now. <laughs> Failures and goddess. The other company that uh, the other developer that they got rid of was Max Plus uh, Press Play Studios, um, who made some of the Max games. Um, they made. Um, Sam and Max. No. Uh, they made the. Um, it was it was it was kind of a weird game in which you were able to draw, um, and then what you drew became kind of part of what was happening in the in the game. Okay. Um, it, it was quite a cool concept, uh, Max and the Cursed Crayon or something like that. I think it was called the first one. Nope. Um, Not it, karmic. It, pardon, sorry. <laughs> Not a karmic. No, uh, no. no. <laughs> um, but it was a uh, it was kind of it was two D platformer. You were able to draw objects in the world, and then they'd appear in in the actual kind of gameplay. Um, it was a really cool concept, but uh, they apparently got rid of it, uh, which again is a shame. They're specifically for us, I think in in the UK, Lionhead is a shame because they were one of the few remaining big UK development yeah. teams. Yeah, all the UK teams are either closed down or moved to America now. Mm. Which I mean, at one time, uh, UK had quite a rich. Um, gaming developer community. I mean, you had at one time you had Core, you had Lionhead, you had Psygnosis. Uh, but I mean, it, it's a shame because the UK obviously has such a, a specific sense of humour, yeah. and it's one that's <laughs> very much missing from a lot of games nowadays. Yeah, and yeah, Fable yeah. still encapsulated that in its own sense, and it was well, one like of the few games chickens. that carried it through. Yeah, basically the multi python humour. Yeah, and it was one of the few games that really kind of carried that through and remained. Um, I'm getting a Monty Python t-shirt <laughs> from the BBC store sale because they're closing down. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, but they had massive savings, so... That's cool. It's yeah. worth it. Mm. Obviously, we've still got Rare. Rare UK, aren't they? Mm. Though, again, it's Microsoft, so Microsoft is screwing them over as well. A sea of Thieves they're making now, which is a MMO pirate game. Don't know if you've seen anything of it. Nope. That hasn't been a massive amount of shame to <laughs> you. But, um, yeah, the, it's a, a game. A what what on earth are they doing? In games. Yeah, like Banjo Kazooie. Why don't they make a Banjo Kazooie or Conker? They're the things everybody wants to see. Conker's weird. I don't like Conker. Why do you like Conker? It's creepy. What's wrong with Conker? And you get sung at by a big giant poo. He does. The great mighty poo. And I'm going to fling my shit at you. Yeah, it's really, really creepy. What's wrong with it? I don't like it. It's weird. If you want to say anything's creepy, I'd go with the sunflower with giant boobs. And they've got like a creepy that. bee that comes up and nestles himself into you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Conquer was not ostensibly a children's game, but... <laughs> yeah, in order to, to get up to kind of the next, the, the platforms above, you have to jump on a boobs. <laughs> uh, sounds like a Japanese game. It's a really, uh, it, but again, it's it's a very specific sense of humour, and, uh, and something that you sunflower just, boobs. Just something that you just can never see in American an American made game. Probably Maybe in a best. Japanese game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, 
it's upsetting. It's upsetting. Oh well. So Say lovey. this is um Grand Theft Horse 2! Rumors. Stop that. Don't just do that again. It's a rumour. It's a rumour <sighs> that Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming. Grand Theft Horse. It's not called Grand Theft Horse. Grand Theft. Why would it be called Grand Theft Horse? It's basically Grand Theft Horse. It's not Grand Theft Horse. It's basically Grand Theft Horse. It's not Grand Theft Horse. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a completely different thing. It's fucking awesome though. It, Good game. It was alright. Oh, I, was no, I never actually that. finished it. Yeah, me neither. Damn long game. I never actually got on to I wasn't that keen on it. Would you not? No, I could give or take it. No, I, I actually preferred the um, Undead Nightmare add-on that they did for it. <laughs> of course, you preferred zombies. It, it was pretty good. It was well made. Um, made a decent job. Did you ever play it? No. It's because you're a douche. It's because everything in its wife has got zombies in it. <clears throat> I want to play a zombie game. I play a damn zombie game. With, with actual, you know, bona fide zombies in it. And this had zombies in it. Yeah, I know, but Zombie Game that's supposed to be the zombie game. But that was kind of the cool thing about it, was that it took an existing world Yeah, Red Dead Redemption was supposed to be kind of serious. I know, <laughs> but that's that was the brilliant thing about it, was that it took a world that you knew, a world that you loved, and then tore that apart. Mm. That's an interesting concept. That's a concept that nowhere else really does. Apart from Far Cry. What? The Dragon. No, you didn't know that world. I mean, that was just, again. That was, it was a, the same world as Far Cry Three, wasn't it? Basically, it was a completely different thing. It was far smaller. Basically, so. no. You've been one place in Far Cry Three. No, I just don't get it. You don't <laughs> get it. It was. Oh. It was. It was. A, it, I like to be controversial. <laughs> it, it was a really great concept. The idea of taking something that you already knew, already loved, already explored, but then. Completely turning it on its head. There's zombies now. Yeah, I mean, granted, the idea of zombies is something that's overdone. Not it's a decent concept. You could have turned it into cowboys versus aliens. Well, that would have been good. I've never seen that film. Is that it's any good? A, a lot of people say shit about it. Like, it. it's pretty good. Fair enough. I might have liked it. It was really good. I don't like the bit where the alien tries to open uh, opens its chest to, because the aliens in Cowboys vs Aliens they have like big zombie arms. Ah, oh, come back. And then for dexterous activities, they have to open up their chest, and these kind of weird flimsy arms come out that are more dexterous. But their heart is right there, pumping away. And at one point, uh, this alien can't get uh, this kid it's trying to kill, uh, so it just sticks its chest against the wall, opens it, and the arms come out to try and grab him. And the kid's got a knife, which just stabs it in the heart. Fucking weird. Okay. Daniel Craig with a giant uh, laser blaster on his wrist. That's that's kind of cool. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, the, there's a rumor coming out, uh, going around. It's that, a rumor that uh, Red Dead Redemption <laughs> Two will be shown at E3. Um, eh, E3. Now I know that um, Rockstar. Uh, uh, have Pretty much already come out and all but said that they're going to show something off D3. Um, Grand Theft Auto 6. <laughs> I mean, it, it won't be Grand Theft Auto 6. It, Grand Theft Auto 2. I don't believe it will be Red Dead Redemption 2. What do you think it will be? I think it will be a new IP. Manhunter 3. I think that they have all of the money. And they all of the money they do have all of the money. And they can make whatever the bloody hell they want. Maybe if they it's decide a VR to make game. Red Dead Redemption 2, then they should be shot in the balls. <laughs> Oh. It's a world that deserves exploring some more. I, I, I agree but with But then that again, Red Dead Redemption was kind of a self contained story, it was really good. It didn't he die in the end, I and mean, that was kind of the end of the story. Oh, yeah. If anything, Spoilers. they'd have to make a prequel? Not really, because at the end, I didn't play the end, but uh, yeah, I said I didn't finish it, and you just went and spoiled the end. Luckily, I'd already watched a Let's Play of it. You get so. shot by like <laughs> 10 people. Yeah, he gets sh shit shot out of him and dies. But that's not the end of the game. You got a few more. You got like another hour of play, where you play as his grown-up son, oh, okay. who has to go and kind of uh, redeem his father. Well, his father redeemed himself, but he has to get revenge for his father by killing all the guys that you know were part of shooting him. That's a cool concept. So you can pick up with his son, Red Dead Revenge. Mm. It would be something along those lines, wouldn't it? Mm. Work. Red Dead Retention. He's just there feeling bloated. <laughs> Red Dead Revolution. 
Red Dead Revelations. Red Dead Reloaded. If it does any of that, they're a terrible name. Yeah, but it's 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 any name plus a one beginning with an R E. So I love the Matrix tr uh, trilogy kind of sequels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The I Matrix Four rebooted. Do you think they'll ever do that? I don't know. They might very well do that. People have been speculating for years that if there was a fourth Matrix film, it would be called The Matrix Rebooted. Hmm. And it would make sense as well, so... Mm, yeah, it would, wouldn't it? It'd be... There is a Bill and Ted 3. There's talk of. It's still not. Keanu really wants it. I oh, know. Keanu! And I'd give it to him. So, there's Halo. <laughs> Let's talk about Halo. You love Halo. I don't love Halo. You always get excited when we talk about Halo. I think you're getting excited and angry mixed up. You want to have sex with the Halos. So, Halo. If you're a giant, if you're a Galactus, then you could use it as a cock ring. You think you would? <laughs> if you're a Galactus, you can create anything that you want. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying, theoretically, he could. You could create a Lady Galactus. A Lady Galactus. <laughs> Is there not a Lady Galactus? Is that why he's so pissed off and has to go around destroying planets? Because... It has no females of his species? Yeah, probably. Mm. He's sexually... Is that what you're basically saying? Galactus is sexually frustrated, that's why he goes around destroying planets. What about the Phoenix Force? The Phoenix Force can kind of mm. become any, you know, any size or whatever else. So. Mm. Can you imagine if Galactus and Phoenix Force wanted to get it on? There? Yeah, but... I don't Phoenix, know whether the Phoenix Force... The wanted. Phoenix Force has an obsession with uh, possessing humans. Or mutants. But it could still... Chose the right mutant. And... I don't know. Apocalypse. Put that on the back burner. <laughs> so. That apocalypse can become big. Um, so, Halo 5. Right, so. There's meant to be a Halo tournament. Um, meant to be. There are Halo tournaments every year and whatever else, but there, there was one specifically that was set up and they said, okay, we're going to do Halo 5 because that's the newest Halo, why wouldn't you? That's, that's the obvious Halo to do, right? Um. They and they've done it specifically for the last eight years. Um, that for, uh, and they've had to, they've literally had to cancel it this year. And it's because Halo Five is so buggy in so many other ways, <laughs> and, and, and they're not able to do what they need to do in order to have a Halo tournament. Um, they're not able to um, create a custom reliably create cr custom games uh, that perform well enough. Um, in order to have a proper tournament online, um, and it doesn't have LAN support, so they're not able to just hook up a load of Xbox Ones and play it in that way. So they've had to literally cancel um, a Halo tournament because the latest Halo game Shit. doesn't allow them to play Halo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, have you ever heard of anything as ridiculous as this? I mean, the, the last thing that I've heard of <coughs> anything like this was Nintendo specifically getting in the way of people playing Smash Brothers. I can't Halo because Halo is getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, I can't Halo because Halo won't Halo. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. And it's so unfortunate. I mean, these people want to... These have these people haven't got an axe to grind. These are just people that want to be able to play Halo and give people. They money. can't because the game's not done properly. Yeah, I mean they they want to play Halo so that they can give <laughs> money to charities. Give all the money. It's it's amazing. It's it's so upsetting. Broken game doesn't do charity. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Classic Microsoft. <laughs> Douchebags. It's not four three four three four three studios. Uh... Problem. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of where do you stop the blame if you like? Yeah, they are part of you know they're, they're a Microsoft first party if you like. We'll blame the people who gave us Windows 10. So Windows 10 is good. Mm. Keeps yelling at me. It's not a and bad apparently, version of Windows. What? It's not a bad version of Windows. Yeah, but it keeps yelling at me saying, I'm going to update your computer. And apparently it's it's following through with its threats on people who leave their computer on for too long and attended. Hmm. Just yeah, kind of sneaks it in there. Which is wrong. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And then Unless they're going to start charging. Caps and whatever else. I mean, and not many people yeah. do anymore, but... I do... 
I don't. <laughs> crazy. Uh, I have ridiculously fast internet <coughs> and unlimited. Yay! So, Titan is coming to Origin Access next week. Now, not many of you will know this. I'm not the type to brag. Okay. If I get something right, I don't have to kind of go around saying, I got it right, I got it right, I told you so. However, in this case, I told you so, Nick. <laughs> Titanfall! <laughs> so, he broke it, computer! His rage broke the computer! Yeah, the... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my computer, it's just having a bit of a fit. <laughs> he was it. just saying Windows 10 was so very good! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> As Windows Explorer <laughs> crashes and burns. So. Now good. I don't want to say I told you so. <laughs> We've been over this. <laughs> I'm not the type to say I told you so. But it has been said that Titanfall would come to Origin Access. When? You argued with me. When? People can go back to the old webcasts. People can dig this up, Nick. They could, you can't just get out of this. Uh, I don't remember. Cause you I said can't it. remember. You said it. And look, it's coming. It's, it's coming all over your face. <laughs> it's there, Nick. Titanfall is coming to Origin Access next week. Possibly this week now, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be this week. And I said it would happen. I called it. I can't remember disagreeing with you. You totally did. You were like, eh, I don't know whether that'd be the time to give you. Did I give any viable reason why? Well, I wouldn't call it viable, but you gave reasons. <laughs> you want to enlighten us with this reasons? I don't remember. I don't, I don't list you everything you say. What do you think I am? Mario. Da 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 da. But, um, yes, yeah, so Titanfall's coming to Origin Access next week. And I think it's a good game to come to Origin Access. I think it makes sense. Um, it, it will suddenly get a player base again. It will give Maybe, you yeah. a reason to actually play the game again. Yeah, it's got no player base. Like, but I imagine it's got barely no player base because that's what happens to these games. Battlefront will do the same thing in a few months. You've also got a bunch of other games coming to you. I don't know. I think these are all the existing games. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Yes, yeah, they, they are because Garden Warfare is on there. Yeah, so um, it'll be the 17th game to be in Origin Access, which is £4 a month. That's it's awesome, really. I mean, I mean and you oh, get decent games in there. Games. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you, you get Dragon decide. Age Inquisition. Which yeah, you if you just sign up for a month with them, power through Dragon Age Inquisition, which you would not be able to do. Apparently, it's a ridiculously large game. You'd get you'd be able to play it for like four pounds. Yeah, and I mean, it, to be fair, it's it's worth it just for things like Plants vs Zombies: God of Warfare. Yeah. That's a brilliant game. I'm not gonna go ahead and get it right mm -hmm. now. Maybe in the future. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. If I had a bit of time, I'd be more than happy to pay that and mm. just, just play Titanfall for a bit. I have and... Netflix to be doing. I can play Titanfall. I've got like two days worth of um, playtime on it. I've not used. How? What do you mean? Origin offer this uh, thing where you can uh, play for an X amount of time to try it out. Oh, okay, that's quite cool. And I've got Titanfall on it. I haven't used it yet. It's, I've, it's I've got other shit to be doing, like watching Netflix. Why are you watching? Well, I've got yet to start watching it, but season two of Daredevil is out. Yes, I know. I did look at it yesterday and then realised that Isabel was sitting with me. <laughs> You're watching Daredevil with your... Well, no, that, that's what I mean. I didn't watch it with her because she was there. What? Uh, I, I got a loot crate today. Oh, yeah. It's in the car, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go get it? Pause the webcast. Pause the webcast. Now we'll just leave it recording. What's up? <laughs> you have to cut this out, aren't I? <laughs> Unless you do something extraordinarily funny. So, what well, Nick's gone, let's talk about Nick. So, welcome to the real wa rational webcast. Now, 
And I think we all know what's happening this week. And that's games. I like games. But I don't play them. Now what I do... I lick them. Take a game. Possibly a new release. Possibly second hand. I just gently go. Simple as. Don't actually have to do anything else with it. I find that that way, I'm able to get the best opinion on it without really kind of making any great effort. Anyway, what are you saying about me? Back. <laughs> yes. I did crack it open a little bit earlier, and I saw this on top. Nice, that's what reminded you. Yeah. <laughs> right, do you want me to hold it? Will you, will you unpack yes. here? Yeah? This is fucking awesome, by the way, look. Miss the fact it's got all that. So, let's take it out one by one and then and, and dis and discuss as and when. It's a daredevil beanie. That's pretty cool. It's reversible. Oh, fucking sweet. <laughs> oh, it's Punisher. Oh, it's Punisher! Just for season two. Nice. Because as we know, uh, Punisher is going to be the antagonist in season two. I think he's one of. One of? Yeah. I think, I think the idea is that he's going to be the primary original and then that's quite fitting, isn't it? That's fucking awesome, isn't it? <laughs> that's cool. Okay, that's badass. Uh, by the way, the theme of this year, uh, this year, this month's loot crate is versus. As you will. <laughs> yeah, versus. AVP. Alien versus predator. Alien versus predator. Yeah, you can get a bunch of different ones. Nostromo collection. Uh, but I think in this one you either get the alien or the predator. So. Oh, that's so cool. By the way, Loot Crate has not, you know, given this to me for free. People, people don't imagine we would ever get sponsored no. by Loot Crate. But if they do want to do that, I'm completely cool with it. Predator! <laughs> he's going on my computer. Oh, he's cool. <sighs> he's cool. Alright, what else we got? We have a t-shirt and it's Evil Spock. Yeah, every t every uh, time you you always get a, uh, a, a t-shirt. Oh, cool! That's a poster for Mirror Mirror. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. I like that. Where is that? Awesome. What else have we got? Oh, we've got an AVP badge. AVP badge. Loot pins. Alien versus Predator. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. What? I don't know. <laughs> What? I don't even know what this is. Is this a bullet? Is it like a... I don't know. Oh no, it looks like some form of poster maybe. So this is Batman oh. vs Superman. It is a wallet. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's a paper wallet. Weird. Yeah, it's got stuff in it. Superman vs Batman. Uh, take the challenge and post it. Mighty Wallet could feature you. Dare to tear. Do I have to tear this in half? They're trying to get you to tear it. I don't know. They're challenging you. I don't know. They've got a YouTube. They've got a YouTube channel. I have to have a look at that. Try to tear it, Nick. I'm not tearing it. It's Try cool. to tear it. I'm tearing it. It's cool. It says dare to tear. Now I get some money off Nick's creep. Dare to tear. I'm not tearing it. Give it here. Uh, no. I'll dare. It's too cool to tear. I'll dare. I'm gonna I'll look at their YouTube it. channel first. See what's up. If we tear it, we'll do it on camera. But you I don't want woman. This is cool. What is that? Word Gush. It's a, a game that you can download from mobile. This this is advertising now. Isn't yeah. It? Sorry. Uh. What oh, is this? A this is a little loot crate magazine. Luke Get that magazine. evil doppelganger look. Step one. Fear some facial hair, get a giant moustache. Step two, a heartless hat, get a giant top hat. Three, a wicked wardrobe, get a bow tie. This bow tie's a cool one. There's a half naked woman on that front of that. <laughs> oh, cool, it's a comic. Harley Quinn. Yeah, and I know it's Harley Quinn. You didn't appear to. Harley Quinn comic! 
Loot Crate uh, exclusive. Loot Crate exclusive. It's a one shot from DC. Yes. That's kind of cool. What that? That's awesome, mate. Don't drop my loot crate, damn it. It's a box. I'm dropping a box. Don't drop my box. It's a cool box. It's a cool box. Can you see that? <laughs> Thing is, it's all AVP kind of related. As opposed to, you know, uh, mostly Marvel and DC related. Which makes sense, seeing as, you know, keeping it up because that's cool. I do like the beanie. Yeah, the beanie's cool. The beanie is the, is the one thing I would specifically <laughs> want out of that. Where is it? There we go. There we go. I like beanies, anyway. I'm wearing the beanie now! <laughs> Not coming off. Okay. Wait, which side should I wear? The Daredevil or Punisher side? That's completely up to you. I think I'd go with Daredevil. Yeah, that's, that's more my style. Daredevil, Daredevil. Anyway, back to. Uh, we should really get back to. You know, getting yeah, so that was stuff. just a little interval in there. Hope you enjoyed it. So, if, if you want to see us do that every week, let us know. Or oh, month. We will. Let us know, especially you, Mr. Loot Crate people. Got a three month subscription because I got it on the cheap. <laughs> so, anyway, um, my sweet beanie. Kind of last week's news again is that um, yeah. Microsoft are finally opening up multiplayer uh, so that people are able to play with not only Xbox users but also PC and PlayStation 4. It's about bloody time. Yeah, essentially to me, this is them admitting, okay, we're never going to get a multiplayer base like yeah. PlayStation 4 or anybody else, so we may as well just open it up and basically give people a reason to buy their games on Xbox One again, mm. if they're able to play with play yeah. games on PlayStation yeah. 4. Get, the reason to buy games on Xbox One is because PlayStation 4. <laughs> mm. You've dropped your bloody blue tag. I know, I'm going to pick it up in a second. So, I wish you wouldn't. What they've had said now is that... Uh, Sony have come back and said, "Well, yeah, fair enough. We'll look into like it." Look like a little fucking We've said we'll look into it. You know, we'll do it. We'll we'll see what we can do. Um, interestingly, they've not come out and just said yes. They definitely will. So uh, they'll look into it. Yeah, but to be fair to them, PlayStation has had cross-platform with su support with PC for pig and ages. Um, oh yeah, you can log into your Steam account with your P P PSN account. So yeah, so it, it, they they've had it for absolutely ages. It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but and I don't know why people haven't done it already, God. But the, the thing was for play, for Sony is that they did it a while ago when, again, they were losing the console battle. Hmm. And they wanted to open it up so that people were able to play with PC, so it kind of opens up their player base again. Um, hmm. So that people, again, had more of a reason to play. Basically, now, the onus isn't on them. <laughs> the console war is won or lost, won or lost on whether they're able to play with PC gamers. No, it isn't. You See that way? That's not the case at all. That's yeah. such the wrong It's not the right um, Now, again, probably more Back last week's news. to VR. Yeah. Because VR crazy this week. And why not? Because the vibe is fucking awesome. Yeah, the vibe is cool. What, um, Sony have come out with the prices. Yes, they have. For PlayStation VR. Whereas the Vive is damn expensive at like £700, 750 if you uh, get it delivered, which is pretty much the only way to do it, unless you get it from like overclockers. I reckon you could do that. What? Save you the 50 quid on Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying. Um, whereas the PlayStation VR is going to be 400 is it? Yeah, three, $399. So it's actually going to be cheaper in pounds, hopefully. It should be about 300 oh, quid. Oh, no, it's 350 quid if you are just buying the um, just the PlayStation VR. Yeah. If you want to get the PlayStation VR, the camera, and the move controller, then it's 400 quid. Stupid, they use the move controller. The that move... makes sense for them. Yeah, I know it makes sense for them, but the move controller's freaking awful. No, it wasn't. It was really good. No, I didn't like it. It was really, really good. The Vive controller, that's good. It was it, the move controller was a really it had a big glowy really ball awesome. on the top. Why is it with PlayStation glowy balls? The PlayStation it had the glowy ball so that it was able to actually track it. It needed the glowy ball. It was either that or have the some really does, expensive the tech. Doesn't need the glowy ball. Well, no, that's because that has the really expensive tech. Well, that's better. 
know, I mean, it I'll is. I prefer really to play more, <laughs> pay more than, you know, have Chloe balls on my thing. Well, then you can do. Well, you, like, you, you just like you balls. I'm not saying I'm not a fan of mouth. balls. I'm not saying I'm oh, not a fan oh, of balls. Oh, oh. And virtual reality balls, I'm sure, will be really good. But it, it was decent. It was decent concept and it worked it was really good i mean i don't know that pissed it all over the wii controllers even with their um what would you call it motion plus yes yeah yeah it's far better fair enough it was it was it, even with the motion plus it was still way superior um, the, just the, the vibe i used today that had the best motion control i've ever used yeah easily it did best thing about that though is the fact that you can but use they, it in full 3D space. Well yeah, but they pumped a this. shit ton of tech into it, that's why it's so expensive. Mm. But if you're going to push the envelope then you need one to do this and you know, Valve and HTC just turned around and said, fuck it, yeah, it's going to be expensive but we're going to do this. Do, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it properly. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with the Oculus um, it's not going to come out with the Oculus Touch and it won't, then the Oculus Touch is going to be but released in, in inter later. It's interesting because you do have a variety. The PS, uh, uh, blah, 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 PSVR is going to be the cheapest. The Vive is going to be the most expensive. But then the Oculus, the one that's actually started this whole thing, this interest in VR, is going to be the middle ground. It's probably going to sell the best because of that. I don't know whether it will be the middle ground in the end. I don't because know, if you like want to get the decent ground. controllers, you're going to have to pay more Maybe, for it. yeah. And it's not going to have the full 3D room support maybe so in the end kind of the true vr experience really is going to be the vibe well yeah yeah but i don't know the ps vr seems like it'll be cheap and cheerful uh the htc vibe is going to be shit hot and mm. you know awesome and it just seems like oculus is the middle ground yeah, it, it, i mean in that respect mm. you know and the, the thing i'm really worried about with the PlayStation VR is that I want it to at least work with the next PlayStation. I, d I don't see that you can have... PlayStation 5? Yeah. If I there is going I to be such a thing. I don't see that you can have something like this which is going to cost you another £400, like enough for another console, and it just be useless in three years. Yes. Uh, whereas the other, at least with the other VR, you know that it's going to be useful in the next few years. Well, yeah, because you, you know the PC. Exactly. If anything, it's going to get better over the next hmm. few years because the tech's only going to get better. Yeah. I mean, then undoubtedly you'll also have better VR and so on. But yeah, but it just seems like that—that's really the way to go. Coming hmm. um, from somebody who's actually used the Vive and the uh, Oculus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it seemed like it was a heck of a lot better than the Oculus. Yeah, the Oculus is not I did bad. use an earlier version of the Oculus. I yeah, so did I. And I'm not saying the Oculus is bad, mm -hmm. but the Vive is immensely good. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, what um, Sony have come out and basically said is we're in this together. Um, Sony have said, look, we've, we've pumped a heck of a lot of money into this, and we're fully aware that so is the Vive, so of Oculus. Mm. Um, and the, it's it's kind of nice to see that they're saying, look, yeah, mm, it's never going to be that just one of us will succeed. The only way that any of us will succeed is if we all succeed. Um, yeah, yeah. The only way that um, it's all going to succeed is if VR is truly the next big yeah. thing. And, and if if one of us, you know, if, if we're going to fail, it's going to be all of us. Yeah. Um, so, and, and you know, and they, they're fully aware that they're representing VR. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite nice to see. Um, and quite interesting to see that, um, that they are very much aware that this could fall flat on its face and this will be a massive investment to fall flat on its face. But it's a massive investment for the players as well. I mean, mm. there's going to be remarkably few people mm -hmm. that get even the PlayStation VR because, you know, 400 quid is still a price of a brand new console. Well, I was talking to Newbie Call about it and he basically said, look, I, I'm currently deciding whether I get the next Nintendo console, which is probably going to come out at the end of this year, hmm. or whether I get the PlayStation VR. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's a fair way to put it. That's a reasonable way to look at this. Yeah. Um, because you are looking at the price of a brand new console or this. A brand new co uh, price of a brand new console that still relies on the old console. Yeah. 
so you're basically not getting any improvement really in terms of like you know the, the base station I mean you're getting the VR obviously but in terms of like like you're not getting the PlayStation 5 of it, it's not going to have a PlayStation 5 of it. Well no but it's, it's I suppose in a way it's kind of an equivalent to I know but you're getting an experience that you wouldn't So we are like talking about the PlayStation 4.5 though which Well no there are rumours about well, well, rumours well, but to me that seems like it go, kind of goes hand in hand with the uh, VR thing the fact they're trying to give a bit more I don't know it's I mean it, it, it would be a reasonable move um, if they if they bring out Basically a new giving console it that and bit support more power. the VR because yeah normally where PCs are more powerful than consoles consoles can still handle it handle what they're doing but I think VR the stuff the VR is trying to do is very intensive and there are some things that you're not going to be able to play on the console VR that you are on the PC. I mean, that's undoubtedly true, but are you aware that the PlayStation VR comes with like a separate processing unit? Oh, does it? Hmm. Well, it's got a secondary processing so unit. So they have actually um, kind of put that in there to kind of say like, oh, we're trying to compete. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's supposedly part of it is to um, kind of enable the 3D sound. Yeah. Um, because they said that they, they need full three dimensional sound and you know, take that pressure off the console if you like. Um, also, it means that as well as being able to see it on the PlayStation VR, you'll be able to see it on the TV as well. It'll be mirrored there, mm. and it, kind of the additional processing that was required, they may as well just palm that off on some random processing unit rather than having that all done through the console. So Either they're way, obviously t they're obviously fully aware of that and taking it all into account. Any way about it, it's good to have options. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. It'd be interesting to see what happens with the Gear VR. Hmm. Because hmm. there's almost... I mean, it's, it's a weird concept, Gear VR. Because it's... It, I don't know. I haven't tried it. I don't know whether it works as well as it needs to. Um, and I also know that Google are working on their, another... Um, kind of a, a new cardboard if you like a new VR yeah, yeah. concept um, which is better than cardboard obviously I think that's where the um, budget consumer VR is going to take place in the uh, mobile based VR and because you know it's cheap to pick up I mean I bought my mum a, um, a headset that you can put your phone in that uh, can be used on many uh, different devices uh, and it's made of plastic and it's got straps and everything so it is a proper headset not just a cardboard one it's about 20 quid or so um, and if, if phones are capable of it then yeah I can see that being where like I say the budget kind of version of VR is if you cannot in any way fork out the 400 600 700 pounds for an actual VR thing and you get 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 a kind of that uh, experience you get you get a limited kind of experience until you know the big ones come down in price mm -hmm. yeah well, I think that's, good. Like, that's another thing about it it's good to have options mm. because uh, you know you've, you've got the whole range of it there and that's, that's all good to have but it seems like already on on like the launch of all these different VRs, the next generation of VR is already being uh, looked into and announced and everything with the Sulon Q. Yeah. Is that how you say it? I was going with Sulon, but I don't know. Sulon Q. Um, it's powered by AMD. Yeah, I mean to say it's next. I don't know whether it's necessarily next generation no. VR, but it's, it's an advancement it's a, on it. It's, 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 it's an alternative, I'd say. Um, I don't. I, don't um, I would say it's it's an advancement because it's kind of it's mobilising. What it is is having. We said they're going to be the the normal VR is going to be the price of a new console and then some, and they still need either console or PC to run the stuff off of. This Sulon Q has everything in the headset. It's completely mobile. You, 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 it processes all everything you do in the headset itself. Now, I don't think it's quite advanced enough and the technology is not miniaturized enough to actually be able to fit everything into the headset. 
uh, because you need like a BV computer or a next gen console to be able to run the co co current stuff. But it's definitely uh, the way things should be going. I can imagine in the future when they perfect this technology, it's all going to be because because uh, that that's another thing that was annoying with Drive. Uh, I kept having to worry about the strap coming around when you're walking yeah. around. You had the wires coming out of uh, your headset. Uh, it's not it's not major, and there's probably different ways you'd be able to get around that. I mean, the the guy himself did mention that uh, mm. because he said that it's it's quite annoying that he kind of had to stand there. You know, reeling it in or letting yeah. it wore out as you wandered around, and he said it'd be far better if there was some form of mechanism to kind of reel that in automatically, and you know, almost like a or hose wireless. pipe type thing. Yeah. I mean, wireless would be fantastic, but just the the delay that you've got there, yeah, yeah. it would be it would just kill it. You couldn't you couldn't have that kind of delay and still get the motion that you that you need. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, the only way you're going to be able to get that level of immersion that I had today is to have it run on a beefy computer with cables directly to it but in the future I thoroughly believe that you'll be able to have wireless with that little connection time <clears throat> I mean you've got uh, the Steam Link doing stuff like that and it's actually pretty good I know people are complaining about latency and stuff and I had some latency before I got my new router since I've got my new router it's been fine so it just needs that extra power to be able to put all the, the extra bandwidth basically but then on from that you're gonna have eventually computing power in that small space that is comparable to the high-end computers you have today I mean just look like 20 years ago you would have never thought that you'd have something like fucking a computer in here would you mm, no, I mean this is a computer it's quite an advanced computer really not to kick my computer now. 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago, yeah. But what I mean is the miniaturization, I, f I f fully believe you'd be able to have that. I mean, even if uh, the headset in the future uses this streaming technology and is kind of on par with um, on live, like it, it's processed in a streaming location and all you have to do is connect to your wireless and it streams directly to your headset, processed somewhere else. I don't know, it could go anywhere. That's the interesting thing about it. Don't you think? It, I mean, it is. It's. It, there's, there's, there are a lot of questions there, and that's a lot. That's <coughs> a lot of questions, very but it could go very, very anywhere. Um, I mean, it could, but uh, the Sulon Q is a reasonable concept. Yeah, it's um, reasonable. I, as it's you say, I don't know whether necessarily the technology, technology is there to, to really have the, the kind of... Um, uh, pixel density mm. and um, a latency. It's probably going to be comparable to like but... the Google VR and stuff. Uh, with yeah, kind of Gear VR kind yeah. of idea. Yeah, um, probably. Just going to have it built in, um, and uh, it will be better than what you get with like the Gear VR because half your processing power on your phone is focused towards you know running your phone. And also, you um, you would have far better screen, you'd imagine as well. Yeah. It's specifically made. So it is possible they have some reasonably good in stuff. this. Just basically have the power of a phone, like a high-end phone, without having to run all that other shit mm. that your phone comes with. Yeah. It'd be basically be the difference between that PC and a console because mm. you know the PC has to run you know Windows yeah. <laughs> stuff. It doesn't. So. Um, and the the other thing with the um, Sulon Q as well that we have not mentioned is AR. Um, yes. It has, um, as well as having the obvious screen, it also has um, lenses that allow you to see essentially straight through. By rights, the Vive's got that too because it's got a camera on the front. It does, but this this specifically has lenses to allow yeah, you to yeah, see yeah. through. Um, so it's kind of more made for AR, if you like, in yeah, the same yeah. way that it's, what's that one called? Hollow lenses. Yeah. Um, whereas, yes, the Vive has got the option to, if you like, create some form of augmented reality. Um, this is closer to what you'd expect augmented reality to one day be. Yeah. Um, and, and that's quite an interesting concept again, which really is more about the Sulon key than any, any other version of VR that we've got at the moment or we'll see in, the, in it, the very near future. It is an exciting time, and I believe that VR is the future. I do actually believe that. I don't believe motion controllers as they were when like, you had the Wii and the Move and the Kinect were the future. But integrated into the VR, like the Vive, 
it's it's amazing. It's it's really good. And we were talking about this, weren't we? You, you kind of need to have motion control well, or yeah. some form of motion exactly. control. Exactly, being able to move around and having those guns, being able to do that without bang on motion control would be impossible. That <clears> that <throat> was pretty amazing. At one point you were you were literally firing one around about here, one about here. You weren't looking at both of them at the same time, but you were shooting at both of them and hitting. Yeah, and, that's and I cool couldn't see one of my guns. I was looking at the other one and swapping it, and it was working. Yeah. I felt like it was so cool. Was... Mm. So, yeah. But oh, yeah. Well, it's been an interesting day. Yeah, it really has, but... Especially considering I read about it this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Small developments, well, big developments at the time, being amalgamated into a great development. That's what we're seeing here with VR. A great leap forward. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've had the motion controls and yeah, they did reasonably well on their own, but integrated into something more, they bec basically becoming more than some of your parts. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what the, this this is an experience. This isn't you know, mm, an add-on. This isn't a, a, an addition. This 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 is an amazing experience. It's an amazing that's time to very hard to describe. It's an amazing time to be in the gaming, but it's not just gaming. It's also I did actually comment that the um, Google uh, Paint thing, tilt brush, tilt brush, I can't would be fantastic for designers being able to make your creation and then go inside it. I know some places have been doing that for a while, like really high tech places they've been able to you know, manipulate their constructs of what they're making. But especially as like technology is getting smaller, you'll need to be able to blow it up and look carefully at it and that's fantastic. I mean, it's good for an architect to be able to walk into a house and just like and then have a look at it. For me, just the, the ability to <coughs> create some three-dimensional objects with no prior knowledge. No! <laughs> you don't need Except to spend... I was creating things and all you have to do is move around. Yeah. And with more advancement and like lines to say where you're pointing maybe would be better because there was a few times I drew a line, I turn around and I'd be off a little bit. You can but imagine if, there was, if, if it enabled Snap. Yeah. Snap 2, that'd be fantastic. But basically after, what, like two three minutes of doing it I was drawing things in mm. 3D and oh, you, it, would, you were just immediately drawing you, yeah. you drew a square then when you wait a minute I could make this into a cube you, suddenly then you're drawing the cube yeah it's, it's, it's like, suddenly that realisation I've drawn yeah. a square it's just in 3D I can yeah, draw I, a cube well, no, in it, 3D it, space it was kind of cool because you drew the square and then thought wait a minute that edge isn't quite on that edge well, I'll just make it into a cube and then it was yeah. like, then it was like wait, I'm just going to make this into a tesseract. I'll, I'll reach into yeah. the cube. And yeah. It was just like that kind of... The, 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 the addition of layers. I yeah. should realise what was going on was fantastic. It is, it is an experience. It, it, it is that realisation of, oh, I can actually do this. Mm. Yeah. So easily. <laughs> but, you know, it's been an interesting day and I think we've run over our time. Yeah, by quite some way. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's been worth it. It's been good. It's mm. been awesome. Yeah, and bearing in mind that was in, I mean, we we had fifteen minutes yeah. playing this thing. This, this isn't long a long thing, yeah, but I think packed in quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It was good Definitely times. Definitely awesome. Mm. And again, thanks for overclockers. They, yeah, they were brilliant. Yeah, you're awesome. They were really cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. My name's been Nick. He's and been Marty, and we've one. been Punishers. Not rational gamers. Bye. Daredevil. <laughs>